Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna make a 3D printed in place handle. Let's jump right into it. So this is a new project that I'm working on. It is a MIDI fighter project using the new Raspberry Pi Pico. And what I wanted to do for this enclosure is to have a handle so I can grab this handle and have better mobility with it, right? What's cool about the handle is that it's 3D printed in one piece. So it can't be disassembled and it has articulation so it can go a full 180 degrees. It works really well for this project and I think it would be probably useful for other projects as well. Uh, not just enclosures, but maybe you wanna make a pull drawer or something. So here's the mechanism um, printed in one piece. Uh, so you have these hinges here, two of them, and they are free spinning. So they, they spin like that and you can't quite really see how it's assembled like what's on the inside here, because you can't take this apart. Um, so this can uh, spin freely here, and then you have these two mounting holes, uh, so you can secure this to a surface, um, like a case, or like I said, a drawer. Um, but yeah, this is what we're gonna design today in Fusion 360. So let's just jump right into the Fusion. Here we go. All right, so here is the model in Fusion 360. And what's cool about it is that it's interactive. So I have some joint, some joint set up so that I can um, interact with the model and um, test out the angles of uh, the freedom of degrees, right? So you can see here, you probably can't do that, but uh, it'll stop about right here and right there. And that's pretty much all I want it to do. Um, so that is uh, how you can interact with it in this model here. So um, this is actually how it prints um, in this orientation. So if we look on the underside, uh, these surfaces that I'm selecting is what touches the bed of the 3D printer. So they're all, they're all flush and flat and level. Um, what's cool is that you can see here um, with the section analysis uh, tool, you can turn on and see a cross-section view of, of the hinge and see uh, what it looks like um, sliced through the hinge. So you can hear that there is some clearance uh, between the surfaces and really the magic number here is the clearance number. It's a quarter of a millimeter. So 0.4 millimeters is the distance between any of these surfaces, right? So if I click on this surface and this surface here, you can see that, yep, 0.4 millimeters is the, uh, is the number. Same thing with the, um, with the kind of uh, cutout here, the cylindrical cutout. So if I select that surface and then the surface here, 0.4 millimeters. So again, 0.4, quarter of a millimeter, is kind of the magic number for clearance. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn off the section analysis and then turn off the handle itself so you can just see the hinge itself, right? So these are kind of the hinge pieces and they print without any supports. Now this cylindrical thing that is, is going across is rather short, right? The length of this, or rather the, the distance between this surface and this surface is about 10 millimeters. It's a little bit more than that, but that's because of those offsets, right? Um, so if we bring this into our slicing program, you can get a good look at what it looks like when you, uh, when you 3D print it and, and take a look at the layers. So as, you, as the print is happening, it's creating these little tabs, it, it creates this bridge right here. And this is the first layer uh, that creates that bridge. And because it's a cylinder, it'll start gradually. So it'll start with one line and then just, to, and then just kind of advances and creates that circle shape. So you can see here that it's definitely geometry that a printer can make. However, you wanna be careful of how long this thing is. If you go any longer than I think maybe 20 millimeters, you're gonna start getting some droop. And if this bottom here starts drooping, well then when you start articulating the handle bit, you're gonna catch some of that material and you might even hear some crunching and it might just mess, mess up um, the the uh, the articulation of it. So I, I say as a rule of thumb, maybe stay in between 10 and 20 millimeters of distance for your print in place hinge. So that's just what I found. It could be different depending on your on your project, but I found that uh, let's keep it um, around 10 millimeters or less than that, or more, you know, <laughs> less than 20, um, but at least um, at least 10 millimeters. So that's why I have it set up here. So those are the hinge pieces and a quick look at kind of how the layer structure is set up. Um, so then when we bring the handle back in and if I uh, hide the hinges, you can see here that the handle piece is really simple. It just has um, this kind of shape and then it rounded, uh, these surfaces get rounded off or rather these edges get rounded off. 
and then there's a circle in the middle here that allows that uh, that that hinge post to kind of flow through there. All right. So with that, I guess we can start designing it up. Um, well, let me take that back. <laughs> so I, another sweet thing about this is that it's driven with user parameters, of course, right? So with that, you're able to modify some of the, the aspects of the design, like the um, like the thickness of the handle. So let's say I want a thicker handle. Let me say I want uh, 15 millimeters. You see that it grows it up pretty good. So they just got chunkier. Let me bring that back down to 10. And then you can play around with the length of the handles. So let's say I want it a little bit shorter. So half of a of a of 100 is 50. So you can see I got a really small hinge there, or a really small handle. Maybe you can make it really long, say 200, and that goes long. Uh, and then there's this other one here called the grab. That's basically like the amount of distance you have from the handle bit to the hinge bit. So if I just modify it, you can see here what it's doing. So I put 80 here, and you can see here that, yeah, that just makes it longer. Maybe bring this back to 100, back to 40. And you can see that's working pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, those are some of the user parameters that I have set up. It was really important to have this because as I was designing the handle to fit the, um, the Pico Fighter um, project, I needed to kind of have that be scalable so I can play around with the proportions because I didn't want the handle to be too big or too small. Um, so that's why it's important to have a user parameter set up so you can play around with those. Um, proportions once you got these two designs together. So with that, I think now we're ready to, to actually start uh, modeling it. So I'll make a new tab here. Um, let's play around with um, making sure that our, our layer structure is correct. So I'm going to create a new component and I'm call this the handle assembly because that's what's going to have my, my components. Inside there, I want to have a hinge. So I'll have the hinge set up. And then I want to create another component, but I need to make sure that the handle assembly is selected so I don't make a component inside the hinge. So we make a new component with the hotkey N. That's the hotkey that I have set up. And then this will be the actual handle bit that you grab. And that'll be that. So those two right now, I have the hinge and then our handle. So let's go ahead and activate the handle assembly, which is like our main route, and start with our sketch. So our sketch is going to be on the floor here. And before I start sketching, let's go ahead and bring up our user parameter window and create our user parameters. So I'm going to have a user parameter called wall thickness, which will be the thickness of the kind of um, mounting brackets for those mounting holes. So I'm going to have that be two and a half millimeters. And we can adjust that later if we want. Next thing I'll do is the handle thickness. So the thickness of the handle, that will be 10 millimeters. So I want it to be a round number like that. That's pretty even. Okay, so handle thickness. Another is handle length, so the length of the handle. Let's go ahead and make that 100 as well. Handle grab, which you saw me um, test. I'll have it set to 40. And I think that'll be it for now. We could do things like mounting holes as well, so like the mounting hole. I could do that. I'll put 3.2 because I like to use M3 screws. That 0.2 gives me a little bit so I can pass the screw through uh, easy. All right, so I think that's it. We can always add more as we need to. All right, so to create the handle, or rather the hinge is really what we're going to draw first. So I want to create a line that'll go across like this. And I want the length of that to be the handle length, right? So that's the length of our handle. Hit OK. So this is a free folding line. And what I want to do is make it symmetrical with the center of our grid, which is this guy in the center. So with that dot selected, I can hold down the shift key and then select this line, bring up my, my sketch um, shortcuts, which is the hotkey S. And then I can select uh, or type in midpoint. I already have it added here. You can add things here by uh, typing in one of the, uh, the things that you'd like. So like I said, mid. And then you can hit uh, this little icon here. Now I already have it there, so that's why it's an X. That's if you wanted to remove it. But that helps me quickly pull out things that I use often, like, well, these right here. So the midpoint, that's what I want. And then that's what um, it snaps it right into the middle. So now I have this. Now I don't want it to kind of cut anything, so I'm going to make it into a construction line because I really just need it for placement. So with the line selected, hit the X key or this icon here that says line type, and you can make it a construction line there. So that's cool. All right, next up, I need to create the, um, the, the actual hinge bit. 
So this I'm going to kind of draw separately and then place it later. I really like that method of drawing your thing first and then placing it later. So I'm going to start around somewhere around here. It needs to be kind of a rectangle shape. Now I know that the width of it, or rather the, yeah, the width of it needs to be the handle thickness. So right here I can just say I want that to be the handle thickness, okay? Now for, for the length of this, this is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to have a, a fixed value for now. I'm going to make it 32, okay? Next thing I want to do is I need to figure out, so I can move this rectangle around now, okay? That's good to know. I can move it around. And uh, as I drag these corners, it'll snap it to the grid. That's another behavioral thing that's good to know. Um, so the next thing I want to do is create a line, a center line. And as I roll over any of these edges, you can see here that this, this triangle shows up. And that lets me know that's the center. So right here, center of that line, center of that line, just by rolling over it. It kind of snaps into place as well. So what I'm going to do is I want to have a line that goes from this middle point to the bottom of this middle point. Cool. And that lets me create mirrors of things now. Again, I can move this around. I'll just move the corner so it's snapped into the grid. And what I want to do is with this line is I also want to create a construction line. Because right now, I can select two profiles of this rectangle. I don't want that. So I'll select the line, hit the X key, and that um, blocks. That makes it so you can use the line, but it's not intersecting it in, in these the shape. The next thing I want to do is I need to create those holes, those mounting holes. They're really important because otherwise, I'm not sure how else to attach. I guess you could glue it. So maybe you can do that. But what I want to do is create this line that goes in the center here, rather a hole. So let me use the circle tool. So you can use um, the midpoint to kind of place it, but it doesn't really matter. So let's say I want to place it here. And I want that use a parameter of, of hole, right? The mounting hole. And for whatever reason, it's Hugo Mungus. What happened there? I thought it was, yeah, mounting hole. I guess I just didn't type it right. So there you go. It's 3.2 millimeters, and it's it's free, right? I can move it around. But what I want to do is I want to create a line that is in the center of the circle, and I want it to be in the middle of this thing. But I want my line to be straight. Well, I can't quite do that yet, so let me place it first. So you can see that there's a, there's a midpoint constraint going on there. So it's in the center of that. And all I need to do is select this line, and, and apply a horizontal vertical constraint. And that'll just make it so that it's always horizontal or vertical. So now what I can do is I can add a distance from here. Let's say I want four. That seems to work OK. And then what I want to do is grab that line and then also turn it into a construction line. So I'll select it and then hit the X key. So now um, it's just this right here. Cool. So now I can move this whole this whole group of, of, of shapes, move it around, and really kind of create a mirror of this hole because I need another hole on the other side. So now that it's all drawn up and it has like all these fixed numbers, I can hit the S key, hit mirror. That's my object that's selected in my mirror line, hit the select, and then this will be our mirror line here, this line that we made earlier, and then hit OK. So now you can see here I have my, my whole group here. So now the question is how do I place this, how should I place this? with this line here, which is defining the length of our handle. Well, I select this line, which is our kind of our construction midline. And then I select this dot right here, this point. And then what I can do is I can say, well, I want to have a midpoint constraint between those two. And that will snap it into the middle now. So now I have this, this piece here that, um, that I can use, or that's set in place rather, sorry. Now what I need to do is to create some walls, some lines that will become walls, right? So what I'll do is I'll grab my line tool, and then I'll start from somewhere around here, and then just go straight down, making sure that it stays um, perpendicular with the line. So now it's straight across. So I can move this around, and what I want to do is I want to have a distance from this line to our center line. And what it should be is our handle thickness. So I can type in handle thickness, but I actually want to do half of that. So divided by two. So just put a slash and then two, and that'll take the thickness of the handle and divide it by two. And that makes it five. So there we go. Now what I want to do is I want to create another line right here that will also be perpendicular. But I want to have a distance of these two lines. What distance? 
the wall thickness. So remember we set up our wall thickness, so I'll put that in here, and now that's set up. So now I have this, this little sliver of, of, of shape <laughs> that I can extrude out and create a wall. But I need another one on this side. So instead of drawing in another set of lines, I can just select these two lines, pull up my sketch toolbox, hit mirror, select my mirror line, which is this guy here, and then that'll make a mirror of that. So you can see here now I have all my elements. I have like my base here, okay? I have my wall here and my holes here. And it's all set up so that if I ever change the, thick, uh, the length of the handle, the placement and position of these sketches will go with it. So let me test that out. So as I go, let's see, 50, it brings it inwards. If I go back to 100, it'll pull it back outwards. And it's all flowing with each other. And that's what we want. All right, so that's pretty much the first kind of sketch. A um, little bit of, a uh, lot of lines, but uh, they, they make a lot of sense uh, when we start doing it. All right, so hit OK. Next thing I'm going to do is select the hinge. We need to make sure to select the hinge component because that's where we want to create. If you don't select the hinge component, you'll be making bodies inside the handle assembly. So it'll gray out our sketch, but that's fine. We can still select these elements or these shapes. And as I'm holding down the shift key, I'm selecting multiple, um, uh, multiple profiles here. So now with those selected, I can say extrude and I want to start extruding this out. Um, this will be the wall thickness, right? That's two and a half millimeters, and that's what I want, so I'll hit OK. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create these walls here, right? So I got these walls here, um, and with them selected, I'll again hit E for, uh, the, that's the hotkey for extrude, and the distance here will be our handle thickness, right? Now because it's uh, starting off the bottom of our grid, it wants to cut as the operation. So you can just change that to join and that'll create what we want. So we want that 10 millimeter handle thickness and I'll hit okay. Now one thing that um, we don't need is this, this surface here. So instead of adding a whole new thing, I will go back into the first extrude and just hold down the control on Windows or command on a Mac and deselect this middle one. So now you'll see here that I actually have two separate pieces here. And that's what it, um, whoop, I need to make sure that this joins. There you go, and now it's joining these two together. So now you have these two separate bodies. So if I bring the, uh, the component opening here, yep, I got those two separate bodies. So we need to bring them together now with that pole that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna create a new sketch inside the handle assembly. So let's highlight the handle assembly and so let's go ahead and name this. This will be like the hinge base. And I'm going to make a new sketch, but this time it's going to be on this side um, plane here. So this side plane on the left and the right. I'm going to hide the hinge base so that so it's not in the way. And then I need to create a circle, right? Somewhere going down this the y-axis here, or maybe it's the z-axis. And this will be a, a fixed number. Right now I'm going to make it four millimeters. So there it is, but it's free, so I can move this around. But what I want to do is make, it, make sure that it has a line that connects to the center of the origin, so right here, like that. I'll hit Escape, and then what I want to do is apply a horizontal vertical constraint to this line, so that it's straight up and down. And now what I can do is I can apply a dimension uh, to this line. So I'll say, I want this to be the handle thickness, right? So the handle thickness is the value that I want. It's 10. And um, you'll see here that it pushes it all the way up. I want it to be the half of our handle thickness. So all I need to do is to go in there and say divided by two, slash two, hit enter, and then that gives it, that puts it right in the center here where we want it. All right, so that's pretty much what I want. I'll hit okay. Now with that, I can select, make sure you select the hinge, right? We, we're gonna start applying stuff to the hinge, so I need to make sure the hinge is selected. That's the component. It's active, grays out our, our little, um, our sketch, but that's fine. I will now select that and hit E on my keyboard to extrude. And what I wanna do is I wanna say start. I wanna start this from this surface. So now that it's set start object, I need to select the object so it'll be this surface. And then the direction will go um, 
sorry, the extent type will go to object. And now it wants me to select the object. So of course I'm gonna select this surface here. And you get a little preview and it even tells you that that's, that distance is 10 millimeters. And that's what I want. Um, but it's parametric. So if, if the distance ever changes, i.e. the handle thickness, it'll, it'll change with it. So I'll hit okay, make sure the operation set to join. And now it'll join those two to and make a, a single body here. So now I have this, this, um, this single body here. There are some things we can do to make it look a little bit better and to make it more structurally kind of better. So what I'll do is I'll hit um, draft. So I want to draft uh, these these uh, these faces here. But I need to select my pole direction first, which will be the top, the tip of this here, the top surface. And now I can select my face here. So what I want to do is I actually want to bring this out a little bit. And what that's doing is it's giving us a little bit of a draft so that the, the wall is a little bit more um, rigid when it prints. And you can select the other end too, the other surface, and that just gives it a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, geometry to work with. All right, some other things you could do is some fillets. So if we want to round off these edges here, there's four here at the top that I can round off. You can see here, um, instead of putting a fixed value, why not give it the handle thickness? Because that's a, uh, that's what we, we want to divide it by two because it's a fillet, and the fillet is a radius, not the diameter. So you can do that by just putting divided by two. And then I'll also select these edges here, which round that off and that looks, whoa, 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 not the surface. We want to select the edge. And you can see here, I'll select this edge here and that gives us eight edges to work with. So now I have our hinge, look at that. Now one thing to note is that look at the clearance between um, our hole. You can see here that you want to have enough area here so that your the head of your screw can fit in there depending on how you're attaching it of course if you don't have screws and you just want to glue it to something you wouldn't even have holes but as long as you have some material here you can attach this to something else right so there's that there's our hinge okay the next uh i think the next stuff we want to do is to is to start making our handle bit all right so with that I want to make the sketch for the handle inside the handle assembly as opposed to the handle component. So I want to name this sketch too, uh, to like hinge, post, or pull, something like that. I'm, not, I, I'm sure there's a better name, maybe the pin, hinge pin or something like that would probably be better. So again, let's, let's, let's uh, highlight it, activate it, and now I'm going to draw. So I'm going to draw again on the, on the floor plane here. So create new sketch, make sure handles, handle, assemb handle assembly is selected here and then I can uh, select the floor plan here. All right, that's correct, yeah. All right, so now what I wanna do is kind of create a line just very similar to what we did before. I'm gonna make it uh, go this way, I go down, and basically I'm just sketching out the rough kind of um, lines that I'll need to create a handle, right? So I just sketched it out. This is kind of the general shape. It's not flowing yet, but here's what we'll do, all right? So we know that this right here, this should be the thickness of the handle. So I can apply a, a dimension and then use the handle thickness parameter. So that's how thick I want that. But also this right here, this these two lines, they should also have the thickness parameter. So I'll apply that, okay? Handle thickness, not the wall thickness. All right, so I have that set up. Now, that's cool. I can move these around now, and, and most of these will, will, will have a consistent thickness to it, which is good. But what I want to do is I want to start with this line. So I want to say this edge needs to be a certain distance away from the center of our origin. So I'll do a, a, a dimension. So what I'll do is I'll say we want it to be the length of our handle, right? But I need to divide that by 2. So let me put divided by 2. Let's see what happens, right? Fusion has to think about it. You'll see that it's almost there. It takes that, but because we're selecting this line, you'll see that it's in the center of our of our hinge. So then all we need to do is say, well, now that we have that, let's put this in parentheses, okay? That little equation and say, you know what? Let's subtract it by the thickness of the handle, but the thickness of the handle needs to also be divided by two, right? So I'll put that inside another set of parentheses and then handle thickness divided by two. And then that 
gives us this number here, 45, which will change now depending on how we change the thickness. So let me open it again. You can see here the full length of the equation is we're taking the handle length divided by two, subtracted by the handle thickness divided by two. All right, and that's what gives us um, the placement here, the perfect placement that we want. Now this right here, this needs to also be a, a certain distance away from our center origin going on this way. How much? Well, we take the handle thickness and we divide that by two and that will place it right where we want, right there. So that's how we're able to uh, use our user parameters to offset the placement of our lines. Now the next thing we need to do is how much, how much distance do we want from this line uh, to this area here. So what I'll do is I'll create a line that will connect. Um, and as I roll over, I want to pick the midpoint, right? So here's the midpoint. And then I want it to, to land right in the center origin. But now with this line, I need to apply a horizontal vertical constraint. So select that. All right. And now I can apply a dimension to this line. Um, I think it was 40, but it's also a user parameter, right? Handle grab. So that's what I'll put there. Cool. And it can be a construction line as well. So I'll select that, hit X key, and now it's a construction line. Cool. All right, so really the next thing is to, you'll see that this line here doesn't quite have a, um, a symmetrical relationship to this line. So I'll do another line, roll over, find the midpoint, and then land it on the midpoint here down below, and then apply a horizontal constraint to that, just like that. Again, make this into a construction line. So now I have these lines that won't move. They're locked in and fully constrained. But I need to now, do. should I draw another set of lines on this side? No, we have the mirror tool, which, which is awesome. So I'll select these three lines, this one, this one, and this one. Hit the S key, hit mirror, select my mirror line, which is, it could be any of these lines here, this one or this one, but I'll just select that one. You get a little preview of it, hit OK. And that's pretty much our whole handle that we need in this sketch here. So now I can name this sketch like handle profile. There you go. I'll hit finish sketch. So that's what we need. Now that I have that, I'll select the handle. Remember, we got to select the handle, activate the component. And then we can select our profile here, the handle profile. Hit E, extrude, and that will make this the handle thickness, which is our user parameter. Hit enter, and there we go. There's that piece there. All right, so now that we have that, we need to create a, a hole um, for this, but not yet. What I want to do is start to add a um, little bit of offset. So I'll select the main component here. And what I'll do is select this right here, this surface, hold down shift and select that surface too. And we need to push it back um, by the value of our gap. We need to push it back. So what I'll do is with those selected, I'll hit the Q key and that gives us an offset that's offsetting the face. I'll set the type, the offset type from automatic to new offset. And then here under distance, I'll put negative and then spell out gap. Now I didn't add a gap yet, which is, which is a problem. So let me <laughs> hit cancel, bring up the user parameters and type in gap. And this will be that quarter of a millimeter, 0 0.4 millimeters. And that'll be the gap distance between all of our surfaces that we need to do in order to have good tolerances and to prevent our parts from fusing together when they're 3D printed. So I'll select this surface, this surface, Q is the hot key, offset is new offset, and then the distance is negative, gap because we want it to go on the inside. And you can see here that it's given us that little bit of, of gap. So I hit OK. Now the next thing I want to do is add some offsets to uh, our hinge here. So if I hide the handle, I need to select this surface, hold down the shift key, and this surface. With those surfaces selected, I'll create, I'll hit the Q key, which is the hot key for offsetting the face. The offset type is already set to new offset, and now I can type in here uh, negative gap again, and that's our negative 0.4. And you can see here as I hold down um, the control or command key, you can you can see how much it's affecting it. So that's that negative 0.4 millimeters pushing it out. Okay, so I'll hit OK to pen that or the Enter key. 
And now when I bring back my handle, you can see that, yep, that's the distance, that's the distance that we need. Okay, so with that, now I need to create the hole. So if I hide the hinge, you'll see that I don't have a hole there yet. We already have one. The hinge pin is the sketch that we can use. So I will um, highlight the handle because I need to activate that component in order to mess with it. Select this circle here, hit E for the extrude, and then basically just pull it out. I can just pull that out. And what I want to do here is it's a little bit of a smart here. So for the um, direction, I want this to be symmetrical, so that's easy. And then for the, the extent type, I want that to be all. So this will go through all visible bodies here, as, as it says. And um, that's parametric now. So if I ever change the length of the handle, it'll remember that the extent type is set to all, so it'll always go through the whole body. So I'll hit OK. Um, I probably should have said that that's a cut. It is a cut already, because that's what we want to do. We're creating a cut. Hit OK. But because that hole is the same diameter as our pin, we need to select these surfaces, hold down the shift key so you can select both of them. And then again, we'll do another offset with the Q key, um, new offset, and this is going to be negative gap. And you're, you can see here that it's uh, pulling it back, opening that, that hole um, by 0.4 millimeters. All right, and that's what we got. I hit OK. If I bring back the hinge, you can kind of see that, yep, that is what we want. You can see that there's there's definitely clearance between those. And at this point, we can uh, select the whole root of the document, hit section analysis, and then select this surface here to get a cross-section look at it. And that's pretty, pretty much what we want right there. Cool. At this point, what we can do is do a mirror of our hinge now. So I'm going to hide the section analysis and um, go inside of the handle assembly bring up this, uh, the design shortcuts, do a mirror, and make sure our type is set to components. Select our hinge, and then our mirror plane will bring up our origins, and I'll use this, this, this plane here to be our mirror uh, plane, and then you can see a copy here of the hinge, and hit OK, and that's, uh, that's our two hinges now. Now, the, um, <laughs> the handle is very blocky. We can, we can make that much better here. So what I'll do is I'll add um, some fillets uh, to these edges here. How much? We should probably drive it parametrically. If you want that full roundedness, let's take the thickness of the handle and divide it by two. Let's go ahead and select the other side as well, these, these two edges here. Real nice. OK. And then if you want to add uh, fillets to this corner, you can do a little trick here as well. So let's say I want these inside corners, these inside edges to be like four. The outside edges, if you want to add a nice consistent um, fillet to it, you would add four plus the thickness of the handle. And that gives you um, 14. And I'll uh, hold down the command key on a Mac or control on Windows to select the second edge there. And you get this nice rounded edge there. It's consistent. So it looks good. And one of the last things I did was just apply a chamfer to the edges here. So this edge here and this one here just had a one millimeter chamfer. And that makes it look nice. All right, so now if we try to move it, you can see here that it just kind of, you can just drag it in space. So if you want to apply joints to it to simulate the uh, articulation, pretty easy to do so. So um, I'll select, um, you kind of want to be able to see what you're selecting. So I'm going to hide the hinges for a second and just focus on, on this. This this is what I want to apply a joint to. So if you've never used joints, uh, it's under the assemble window here. The hotkey for it is J. So I'll, I'll select that. And the first thing I'll select is, um, you see that when you roll over this cylinder, you see that there's these little, um, these kind of these little snap points. And the way to get to them is to hold down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows. And when you hold that down, you can now kind of select, it locks that selection of the surface. And now you can select uh, one of these snaps. I need, I want this center snap. So I'll select that. That now grays it out and gives you this little uh, cookie icon. And now what I want to do is bring out one of the hinges. Okay. So this is the hinge that I want to use, but I can't see it. So I'll hide the handle. And then again, if I roll over the surface, and hold down Command or Control, you can snap to one of these guys. So I, of course I want to snap to the center 
of the cylinder. Now I can't see anything yet, so I have to turn on the handle again, but that's it. I don't have to play around with any of the alignment for the joint here, because it's pretty much in the center that I want. But I do want to go into the motions tab and just verify that the type is set to revolute and that the rotate is on the Z axis. And then this little animate lets you preview the animation and that's what we want. So that, that's great. So I'll hit okay. That works nice. Give fusion a second. I can bring back the other hinge. Now it's not gonna work though. It's just gonna go with it because there's nothing really grounding our hinge yet. So I'll hit, uh, you know, hit control Z or hit revert up here. And what you wanna do is select this handle, right click, and you see that ground, if we hit ground, it'll pin it, basically saying you're grounded, you can't move. So now it can't move, but if I move the, if I move the handle, it allows me to, uh, to articulate it. So that's cool. And you'll notice that I didn't need to add a joint here, um, but if I move this one, then yeah, you need to, you need to apply a joint there. So it, you can do that. Um, it's, again, it's super easy. Uh, just kind of want to be a little bit careful. So I'll hide the second hinge, come down here, hit J on my keyboard, roll over the surface, hold down command or control, and then select that middle point. Hide the handle, bring back the hinge, roll over the surface, hold down control or command, select the midpoint, bring, reveal uh, the handle again, and just verify that your motion is set to revolute, and the axis is set to Z, and you can preview it again, hit OK. So now that works. As I move it though, you can see here that the uh, you know, because it's not grounded, it's moving freely. So that's easy to do. Undo all that right there. Right click on your hinge that's mirrored and then just say um, ground. And then there you go. So now you can move this stuff around. All right, so that is how you design a print in place handle. Now let's play around with the user parameters. Let's say I wanna go thicker here and go with 20. What happens? It goes really, really big. Now here's the issue with the thickness because the length, the width of our hinge wasn't really set to be parametric. So if I bring up the hinge base, right click and say show dimensions, you can see here that this 32 should probably be a user parameter. So let's say we want this to be the thickness of our handle plus let's say 25. What happens there? Well, it gives us, no matter how uh, thick the handle gets, that that fixed value will always append to the width of our hinge. So if I go a little bit lower here, let's go 15. You can see here that's probably working a little bit better. 20, that's working a little bit better. And you really wanna be conscious of the clearance for your mounting hole. If you are using screws, you do wanna have at least a little bit of extra room here for your screw head, the head of your screw. So if you wanna add more to this, like 30, that's fine too. It's, it really depends on your design and, and how how you know, how, how do you want it to fit? All right, so then the handle thickness, I'll go back to 20. And here, that's that's not, that's not working okay as well. So that's a really chunky handle. That is super huge, but it still works. It's just an extreme example of showing how the user parameters can work through across the entire design. If we take a look at the, the timeline, there's not really that much going on there. I will have this as a downloadable thing so folks can customize it and step through it. Um, but yeah, that's how you can design it. Um, it's really simple. If you wanted to add more things to it, of course you can add more pieces to it. Um, but for this one, it's like the most simplest that I could come up with. And uh, it worked out really well for, uh, for the Pico fighter uh, because it's, it, it, the, simpli the simplicity of it um, really, really looks nice with the rest of the kind of the, the rest of the simpleness of the, of the case. Now I have a, another layer by layer. I did a couple, um, a couple maybe a year ago on how to do a print in place uh, hinge with a door. So here's one that I did. Um, like I said, a couple maybe a few years ago. Um, so there's another example. I'll have that linked as well. And just for extra credit stuff, um, I have a crank that I've also done that I'll probably do. If you guys want to see that, let me know. I don't have it here open, but that's pretty much what I wanted to create. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and look at, um, you know, at Cura, at slicing it real quick. Now we looked at this hinge, but let me bring in um, the whole thing. So you, if you're wondering, like, how do I export this out of Fusion, you would export this assembly as opposed to each individual body as an STL. You just bring in this whole thing, right click, save as STL, 
hit OK, and then save it where you want. All right, and then that'll come in to your slicer like this. So bring it in. There it is, in the right orientation that we want. Let's slice it, and then we'll step through the layers in the preview tab here. This is Cura. So here we can step through. It's only 50 layers tall. And you can see here that, yep, you can see the clearance down there. And there's a good amount of clearance that uh, that does not fuse, at least with my setup. It's a 0.4 nozzle with a 0.2 layer height, and the line width is 0.38, um, if that's helpful for anybody. But it's going to be different per printer. But you know that's a good kind of look at just stepping through the layers, making sure that your offsets are all there and everything, and that your um, you know your infill is where you want it to be at. The infill here is like gyroid 10%. But that's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys think it's a good idea, if you print it out, do let me know. I hope you guys like this one. I will see you in the next one. But until next time, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.